briefly speak to your role and and why you want to be confirmed. Okay. Um, Senator Steinberg, I do have some family members here. Um, my nephew, Joshua Carter, who uh, has a great interest in politics, uh, and maybe a future legislator, who knows? Where do you live? Rockland. In Rockland? Yep. Okay. In school? Yeah. All right. His mother, my sister-in-law, Barbara Carter, my brother-in-law, Craig Fountain, my youngest sister, Pauline Fountain, and my oldest sister, Liz Hartman, where I... Uh, domicile when I'm up here for meetings and so forth. Well, welcome to all of you. And thank you for coming. Mr. Lowry. Uh, my wife, Susan Unwood, had hoped to be here today, but uh, unavoidably cannot. She has asked me to express to the committee that her absence here is not to be taken as an opinion as to whether you can vote <laughs> for me or not. We know her well, and uh, I know she's, uh, she's in full support of you. Thank you. There, Ed. So, very good. Why don't you speak briefly? Okay, uh, well, this is a very tough act to follow, uh, Carla Peterman, but uh, I'm here to represent the Sacramento State College graduates. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> they they deserve representation, too. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Rules Committee, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity for you to consider my uh, confirmation to uh, the OSHA Appeals Board. A brief bit about my background. Uh, in the first Brown administration, I served slightly excess seven years as chief of the division, the enforcement arm. Um, that program was in the early stages of the implementation of the Cal OSHA Act, which had been uh, signed by then Governor Reagan. Uh, probably some of the more notable things that were done was the establishment of the Carcinogen Control Act, uh, the consultation program for employers to get uh, advice on how to comply with OSHA without fear of citation. Uh, the first voluntary compliance program between labor and management and OSHA with the uh, Bechtel Corporation and the San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant and so forth. Uh, more recently, I was appointed to fill the unexpired term of a member on the board by then Governor uh, Schwarzenegger, and I'm pleased that Governor Brown has seen fit to uh, appoint me uh, to a new term. Uh, very briefly, in the time that I've been on the board, which is March of uh, 2009, uh, some of the things that when I first came on the board that were of a great concern. Uh, there had been a letter signed by some 47 members of the uh, OSHA inspectors about certain board practices. Uh, one of the worst probably was the, the practice then of having sometimes three and four cases calendared on the same day with the same OSHA inspector. Uh, the allegation was that having to handle that many cases on a same day, some of the cases somewhat complex, forced uh, settlement that was not in the interest of protection of workers. Uh, that is no longer the practice. That uh, change was done uh, in 2010. Uh, there have been complaints uh, from time to time about some folks wishing continuances and not being able to get a speedy answer from the board as to whether or not that was allowed. Uh, that has also been changed. Uh, the board in the last two years has been able to reduce the amount of time to process appeals from 10 months to nine months, which I think is important. Uh, we've also in 2010 and early part of 2011 uh, conducted three hearings conducted by presiding law judges to offer training to the general public, uh, attorneys who practice before the board, unions and others, as well as OSHA inspectors about what the board looks for in terms of presentation of cases, uh, evidence gathering, establishing credibility of witnesses and so forth. It was very well received and I anticipate we may repeat that. Uh, we've also developed a customer service survey which gives anyone who has contact with the board the opportunity to give us written feedback about what the experience was. Uh, were the uh, 
presiding law judges who conducted pre-conference settlements or hearings, if it should go that far, uh, were they uh, free of bias? Uh, were they uh, good at eliciting a full record and so forth? Uh, it attempts to give the opportunity to not just those who may be represented by counsel, but a lot of small employers who don't have counsel and who can't afford it the opportunity to give us feedback as to how we're doing. And I should also indicate that we've also established a uh, complaint hotline for people to anonymously provide complaints about any experience they've had. Thus far, we've not had anything. More recently, we've been able to begin, and I think we'll do this probably May March the 1st, a video conferencing project which will deal with the need to provide a closer opportunity to where witnesses may live or employers may live or union uh, members may live who have a role to play in a hearing. And uh, this has been a difficult process, but we, I think, finally have reached uh, agreement with the providers and so forth, and I expect, as I say, to deal, see that in effect by uh, of March the 1st. Uh, I, I, there are other issues that probably could be uh, spoken about, but let me uh, close at this point and I'll take your questions later and return it over to Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. All thank right. you, Mr. Carter, Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Lowry, Mr. Carter. <laughs> and thank you, Senator Steinberg. Um, I'm, I'm honored to appear before uh, your committee and thank you for the introduction. Very briefly, my career has been primarily in public service. Uh, I have a law degree, practiced law for a number of years, including the Attorney General's office, worked primarily uh, in, in the environmental field, and as uh, Senator Steinberg alluded to, I was uh, director of the State Department of Toxic Substances Control for uh, five years um, in the Davis administration. And I hope to bring some of my um, administrative experience to a degree and some of my insight to this job as well. I can think of few things more ennobling than being part of a system that's designed to ensure that men and women can work safely in their jobs. So I take this appointment seriously, recognizing the trust that the governor has put in me and recognizing that I'm asking you to put trust in me as well. It's been nearly a year since I was appointed, and in the remaining minute or so, I'd like to highlight a couple areas that I've focused on. Uh, first, as you know, administration is not part of my statutory mandate. That's reserved to the chair. Um, nevertheless, I've been active in recruiting and interviewing for vacant administrative law judge positions and legal positions within our organization. And I'm happy to say that we should soon be at almost full strength uh, for the coming year in terms of the judges that we will have and the legal staff. And I think that will enable us to keep current on the cases which the division files and issue our own decisions in a timely manner. Second, I've attempted to use my legal skills to see if there are cases in which we can speed the process of issuing decisions in a manner which does justice to an issue but does not unduly delay a case. One way, for example, is to use our authority, which allows us to modify a decision of an administrative law judge instead of taking the case as a full decision after reconsideration. Another is to look for issues that we can treat as a group that might overlap in several cases. So I'm trying to look at those ways to speed efficiently and fairly what we do. And third, I've paid some attention to cases which appear to have been decided on insignificant technicalities, which in my view can lead to gamesmanship in the process. Our hearings are supposed to be informal, yet cases sometimes have been dismissed because of technical errors in some of the documents. We have recently issued decisions which clarify that in a, the important determinant is whether the parties were adequately apprised of what the issues were and whether those issues were and could be fairly litigated. We'll be looking at our regulations in the coming year to make sure that they're in compliance with California law and the standard as well. So I hope to continue some focus on those issues. I also anticipate that your legislation, AB 2774 of a couple of years ago, 
will be an important focus. That's the one which deals with what constitutes a serious injury, how, or a serious violation, how is it defined, and who is capable or qualified, and how do you qualify someone to offer an opinion as to whether a violation is serious or not. That legislation went into effect 1-1-11. Uh, and we have yet to have any of those cases before us as they wind through the system, but they'll be here and we'll be uh, working hard on them. Very good. Thank you. Let me uh, begin the questioning. Uh, and I have a uh, particular point of reference here for my questioning. Um, I'm reminded that uh, my first rules committee hearing as chair in January of 2009 uh, was was to hear, and we ultimately approved Candace Traeger uh, as a member of the board. And at that time, there were a number of complaints that were followed up, by the way, our rules committee was followed up by three legislative oversight hearings that focused on one of the things you mentioned, Mr. Carter, the overbooking of hearing calendars, the routine denial of continuances, and the scheduling of hearings, you say, at locations far removed from the work sites where it would be difficult for the worker or the, or the representative to be able to attend. And then in September of 2010, a U.S. Department of Labor study concluded that the appeals practice in California, and I quote, fall short of an appropriate appeals process that is at least as effective as that under the federal uh, OSHA, uh, OSHA, OSHA law and consistent with federal court decisions. So what has changed uh, since January of 2009 and what has been your response as chair of the board and as member uh, of the board since your appointment to that September 2010 report? Okay. Uh, first, with respect to the venue request, uh, Chairman, uh, the board has operated with significant vacancies for quite some time, both the previous administration and up to very recently, uh, this administration uh, was reluctant to fill vacancies. We had, for all of Northern California, one presiding law judge and one administrative law judge. More recently, Governor Brown, this administration has authorized the filling of vacancies. We now have three additional administrative law judges, and I anticipate that uh, we will be able to do hearings with some time when these folks have had some tra uh, training and so forth, we'll be able to do hearings in Bakersfield, uh, Reading. Uh, we have been doing uh, hearings, calendared hearings in uh, uh, Fresno, uh, that with the capability of the video conferencing, which will make it possible for those who live far away and can't come in, can go to a state office and assuming that we've got the appropriate connections and so forth, they can participate as a witness at that location. That was part of it. The other part that I think you're referencing has to do with the board's policy of implementing the <coughs> reporting requirement that employers have where a worker is either seriously injured or killed, must report that injury or fatality within eight hours of knowing or reasonably knowing of the violation. I'm very aware, uh, it's become very clear to me that the board is not in sync with the legislative intent of this. And so I've had discussions with Ellen Wydes, the chief of the division and members of the administration to seek the need for legislation to clarify the application of the requirement that uh, employers do this. Are you talking about the minimum fine associated with that? That's correct. And so, Senator, if uh, knowing that the administration would support this clarification in applying the law, 
uh, we would work very closely with you and your staff in, in terms of that, uh, because I know this is something that you've had a, a very serious concern about. I do have a serious, you actually uh, anticipated uh, my next question, which was, which was just that. And again, I know that you and the board have, have an adjudicatory responsibility and to not judge cases here before the, the rules committee, and I, I certainly respect that. I would just say for the record that there, the last board interpreted the statute to say that the board could reduce the minimum fine of $5,000 for failure to report, and again, you said it, a fatality or a serious injury uh, as the result of a workplace incident. And we could argue whether that's the right policy or the wrong policy, and, I'm, and we may do so in the legislative context, but I just want to point out for the record that there's two ways to do it. One is for the legislature to pass a statute and the governor to sign it, a bill and the governor to sign it. The second is for the board to reinterpret uh, the law as it stands, uh, as it has as it has relevant cases before it. You don't even need to comment on that. That's my, um, that's, I'm, I'm saying it. All right. Um, Do you, I mean, if you're welcome. Well, let me just make it, a brief comment. <laughs> uh, uh, Senator, I'm, I'm well aware yeah. of the feelings about this and the manner in which the board has a, applied this. Uh, I anticipate, uh, that the board will be giving an expedited review of our process as it relates right now, while we also work with you and your staff about developing some new legislation, I think, that could better clarify this okay. and apply it. But recognize one of the disadvantages to a statute, of course, especially if it's not done on an urgency basis, is that it can't go into effect until the 1st of January next year, and that means that uh, we've got a whole uh, 11 and a half months for for there to be ambiguity. True. Thank you. Sure. Let, let me uh, I'll allow, you know, Mr. Lyre, we may respond to this series of questions, but let me just get the, the last one um, on the table here. And again, relates to process and the relationship between the board and uh, your administrative law judges, now I guess plural. Uh, <clears throat> The, um, and, and you have a little background here with my work as an ALJ with the State Personnel Board years ago, and the way that I think it's kind of supposed to work is that the ALJ renders a proposed decision, and that in most instances, for efficiency purposes, a board in general adopts the decision unless they really disagree with it, a and in which case, appropriate to, for the board to hear the case and and, and to do their duty. And what is concerning to me, maybe, it, maybe there's a good explanation for it, is when looking again at the, uh, at the statistics here, from 1998 to 2008, the board used it, the, their authority to take up a case uh, de novo, if you will, 73 times. However, since March of 99, the board has taken up an ALJ decision for reconsideration on its own motion a total of 97 times. And in your response, Mr. Carter, to the questions, you indicate that when the board takes a case, it takes three to four years for the case to be resolved. Might be, maybe very appropriate here, but if we're, if we're trying to balance between expeditious justice and, and thoroughness, I just wonder if it's skewed a little bit uh, uh, against uh, efficiency and timeliness. If, if I stated three or four years to resolve a case, I misstated it. I, th I think w one of the things I mentioned was that we've been able to process cases. Generally, it's been around 10 months or so. Now we're down to about nine months uh, or so forth. So we are doing things more quickly. On those, on that, on that type of case that yeah. you just described. Right. Um, um, right. Um, I, th I think what you're describing, Senator, is a case where the board has granted uh, reconsideration. Reconsideration, that's right. Right, reconsideration. Okay. Those take longer. And in my opening statement here, 
I, tr I tried to say that's one of the things which I've looked at because we, when I arrived, had about 80 to 90 of those cases on a docket waiting for decision. Uh, those cases are reviewed by our lawyers who often write a proposed draft. Some of the board members do it as well. Um, the issue then is, well, we've got to write a new decision, we've got to review it and so forth, and it takes a while. We may not have to write a full-blown decision after reconsideration. There are other ways to do it. One is just to simply modify the administrative law judge's decision and issue it. Another is to send it back to the ALJ with directions and so forth. And I've been looking keenly at that because- Good, so you're on top of the concern that I raise about the potential of a lengthy or time frame that may, might be, uh, emphasis on might be necessary to resolve a case. Yes. Good. Let's go to other members. Senator Alquist. My, my first question uh, to both Mr. Lowry and Mr. Carter would be, uh, I know there have been some significant problems over the years. I know we had a lengthy discussion the other day and you addressed, you know, 90% of the issues. But the core issue for me, and I'm asking this of my colleagues also, is, you know, you've stated what you plan to do to rectify the problems and make the situation better. How can we be really guaranteed that all of that will occur, the proof really is in the pudding, and we're asked at this moment in time, though, to approve uh, the, the nomination. So, um, okay, how, let me answer how can we be assured sure. uh, that a, these changes are going to occur, is yeah. my first question. It's, it's a fair question, uh, Senator. Uh, one, I'd have to say, look at what we've done as a board prior to Mr. Lowry's being on the board and my appointment in March of uh, 09 in terms of some of those complaints. We have, for example, no, as I mentioned earlier, a process now where we do not calendar multiple hearings by the same inspector for the same day, forcing them to have to, in some cases, prepare for three and four. In fact, the process right now is at 9 a.m. of a hearing day. The first case is a more complex case. At 1 p.m., it's a simpler case. If the complex case goes beyond that, then the other one gets put off. So that was a key criticism of the board by uh, DOSH attorneys and, and uh, inspectors. We resolved that. Another issue that was very much on the minds of many people, both from all parties, from employers as well as uh, WorkSafe and unions and, and DOSH inspectors, sometimes asking for a continuance and basically being told that if you don't get a response from us, assume that you're gonna have to be at the hearing. Uh, now there are other reasons sometimes something didn't happen because they didn't get both parties notified, but that change has been made. Uh, we've also, in response, I think, to some folks, try to be as transparent as possible in terms of how we approach stuff. It's a significant piece of legislation introduced by Senator DeSalline last year, which is a two-year bill. We've met with lots of stakeholders in our public meetings and so forth, labor and management and so forth, and you know we haven't reached any consideration, uh, serious or conclusion, I should say. But. Um, I, I would hearken back to what I said earlier. I, I think that the issue of reporting does require some legislation to clarify it so that the division, the enforcement arm, has the ability to inspect for it and apply it in an appropriate, flexible way. Mm -hmm. In my view, you're not gonna listen to me or anybody else from the division, the enforcement division in this, <coughs> unless we're credible about dealing with the immediate problem now as a board on some of our policies. Uh, right, and I, I'm sure you can tell in, in the conversation we're having, having that we are very concerned about transparency and reporting. And yes, Mr. Lowry, did you want to comment on well, that? Well, I'd echo what the, Mr. Carter said, and then I do not mean to be flipped, but uh, the term which you were looking at in my appointment ends a year ago, a year from now in 2013. It's an unexpired term and it was two years and I've served about a year. So at a minimum, I have a year to persuade you um, that I can do the job. Yes, 
Thank you. Right. Uh, when we met the other day uh, and talked about some of critics of, of the board, you know, I, I mentioned and you've addressed the uh, overbooking, the backlogs, the letter written by the employees uh, complaining about the board. I'm not sure that you addressed the Federal Department of Labor special study on the board, and if just in two sentences, if you could address that, sure. that would be great. Um, there were a number of recommendations that the uh, the federal study had. Um, I don't remember all of them now. I went into detail on them in the, in the letter which I responded to that came from the committee. I think we are on track with the federal department uh, in terms of meeting their expectations so that we are at least as efficient and, and, and effective as they are. Um, We've, we have regular meetings, uh, our executive officer, our, our chair, with, with them. And I think they are generally satisfied with the progress that we have made. And they're, they are as on top of, the, of it as we are in, in making sure that we stay there. Well, in terms of having 12 months to convince us, perhaps you could send a letter uh, to our chair uh, that would be distributed to all of us uh, stating what the top three prior priorities of that study were and how uh, how many accomplishments you have made in, in that direction. Okay. Yeah, we'll that do would that. be great. We'll, we'll be happy to. Yeah. Okay, the next question, uh, we've, we've talked about the video conferencing, right. and um, given that your northernmost office is Sacramento, and people come from Eureka as an example, um, you spoke of a pilot project, and my question to you is, what have you done on uh, to promote the um, regulations to see that there is equal access to all people throughout the state of California to be able to be uh, taped so that they are a part of this democratic process. Um, Senator, uh, the, the uh, video conferencing project right now is initially a pilot project because we do anticipate there are going to be some problems. We, we attempted to get it going even last fall. We had problems with uh, clarity of vision and mostly in terms of the audio response. You almost thought you were talking to someone in Afghanistan and so forth. So the, the pilot project, once it deals with the bugs in the system, to speak colloquially, will then make this as a formal proposal because we do have to adopt a regulation as a board to implement this. And we'd like to see a timeline a timeline on that. All right. Well, and we're having a stakeholders meeting on February 2nd where we will uh, present a first draft for everyone to Great. talk about that. And, and my last comment is that, uh, and not to go into detail, but I, knowing that this was very important to the pro tem, uh, and also important to me, this issue of the minimum $5,000 fine, I can state uh, certainly from my work in the healthcare area that sometimes um, a law has been interpreted differently when it's been quite clear what it meant, and I look forward to that being resolved mm -hmm. also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Alquist. Senator Fuller? Well, in the interest of time, I'm going to waive most of my questions. We had a great discussion in my office, and uh, as you know, we're going to, you have sort of um, promised that we'll have ongoing discussions because I'm very interested in the video conferencing and developing uh, that capability for the areas that we have, and I appreciate uh, some of your ideas and strategies for uh, how you might be able to um, more effectively um, be near local areas for, for some of these um, uh, appeals cases when you have these new resources that you're putting in place. So Perfect. I'll be watching and I thank you. And I am also particularly interested in the, um, how, the, how the penalty phase develop and change. So I think we'll all be eagerly awaiting the, your letter and at that time we'll Maybe if we have more questions, we'll talk to you again. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Fuller. Senator Dutton? Yeah, just a couple of follow-up questions. I and We had a very good uh, meeting in my office, and I'm very comfortable with both the uh, both these appointments. Uh, I do just a couple of clarifications, though, because obviously part of the backlog is a result that you've been operating shorthanded. 
Now, uh, to somebody who's actually been involved with the budget process for a number of years now, uh, this particular, you're funded by uh, special funds. They're not subject to the whims of the general fund, per se. What was the reason for these vacancies to uh, <coughs> remain unfilled? Um. <laughs> Both with last administration mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, you know, to be candid, I, I think uh, Governor Schwarzenegger and up to recently uh, Governor Brown wanted to avoid the appearance of having too much personnel increases at a time of overall budget crises. Uh, it is true that we are not general fund money. Our Half our money comes from the federal OSHA, and the other part comes from the fees that employers pay to their worker compens uh, compensation. Uh, but uh, as I've stated, we are virtually filled up now, and I anticipate the, a lot of the problems that we've had should not be there. The, well, please don't be bashful about filling us in on those kind of problems in the in the future, because you know all of us uh, in the legislature uh, uh, are particularly interesting to make sure that we have a safe and healthy workplace for employees, but also that we have a fair process yeah. for employers. And you cannot have uh, a speedy remedy if you're operating at one third your your force. So, you know, I would appreciate. I'm sure the. Uh, I'm sure Daryl Steinberg feels the same way. If you run into those problems again, make sure you, you know, let us know because there's no excuse for you to be operating shorthanded as far as I'm concerned, especially when it's not subject to the whims of the, of the uh, or the problems we regarding the general fund. I was curious about what was brought up about the uh, efforts to change the law regarding the reporting of, of a death or, or accident within the eight hour period injury. Uh, it's my understanding that what it is when the legislature passed the law, it used the term may, and apparently what's happening, people feel it needs to be stronger and, and change it to shell. Now, to me, may, and I'm not an attorney, but you know, may seems to say there's some flexibility. You kind of make a determination about intent and so forth. Shell is an absolute. Uh, how much, sometimes we run into those kind of problems in all statutes or, or legislation that's passed by us, but. Doesn't the executive branch then have some ability to kind of set policy into place, or is it because of prior actions dealing with this particular statute or law that uh, it kind of locks you into have the flexibility aspect? Yeah. Uh, you know, Senator Dutton, I take very seriously the uh, statute that employers uh, have an affirmative responsibility to make the report within eight hours. I mean, the, the policy objective there is clearly to get the inspectors out to the accident site as quickly as possible so that other workers who might be exposed to the same condition uh, don't suffer ear injury or even death. Uh, I, I think that Thank you. there were uh, concerns about how to practically apply it in a way that would uh, take note of uh, a lot of employers who make good efforts, who have good safety records and so forth, and distinguishing maybe those who do not. But it's clear the legislature intended that if there's a violation, it's a $5,000 penalty. If there isn't, then there is no penalty. And I, I think we do need some, some clarification on the language here, and, and we'll work very closely with the legislature on this. Okay. Can, can I just on that before you go sure. on, Senator Dutton, just because I think it's, uh, before we lose the thought, and again, the purpose is, you think you said it, is not to punish businesses, but really is to create a deterrent, because somebody dies on the job under, you know, uh, suspicious circumstances or where there's a workplace safety problem, boy, uh, you don't want a second person Yep. And we all we all agree on that. And just the, the statute itself, because it is important, you're right about the may versus the shall. But what the statute actually says is an employer who violates this subsection may be assessed a civil penalty of not less than five thousand dollars. So it says you may you may assess a penalty, you may choose not to assess a penalty, but if you assess it because it's a, it's serious enough. It says not less than five thousand dollars. That's the issue. That's the issue. Yep. Well, if you need clarification, I would 
It would seem, though, that if we can't get it, you know, if the, if through an executive, some type of authority or whatever, if you have to have us give you the clarification, then I would suggest that's what we're going to have to yeah, do. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go no, but no, but that was it. That okay. was my last point. Okay, very Thank good. Um, Senator DeLeon is in health committee. Uh, so let's hear from witnesses in support. Okay, should we move back? I guess we just do what we said. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Angie Wei on behalf of the California Labor Federation in support of both of these can candidates to the Cal OSHA Appeals Board. First, we'd like to say we very much appreciate the pro tem's vigilance on the issues of health and safety affecting our workers and our members. Appreciate the members of this committee, your vigilance and diligence in making sure that we have health, healthy and safe workplaces across our state. Um, we think that we were here at the pro tem's first rules committee hearing and think that that committee hearing actually kicked off maybe not soon enough, but eventually did kick off some pr changes at the appeals board that worked better for us and our members. First, um, an advisory committee process was set up at the appeals board, giving the public and our members an opportunity to weigh in on policies and practices coming down the pipeline there. And the work of the continuances and the scheduling issues have really helped to expedite some of the hearing processes at the appeals board and is working at the Herculean task of trying to bring down that backload, which is something that we do, do support. Um, we are looking forward to engaging on this issue of the minimum penalty around a violation uh, fatality on the job site and look forward to working with members of the legislature as well as the appeals board to make something happen there. Again, we appreciate this opportunity. We stand in full support. Oh, I should just say too, we feel very lucky that these two gentlemen are willing to come back and do public service, that we actually have substantive uh, knowledge and experience to bring to bear at Cal OSHA, both as a former director of Cal OSHA and also somebody from Toxics. You know, the issues of toxics and dangerous chemicals on the work site has become more and more an issue for our members. So we're very uh, lucky, we feel very lucky to have such substantive expertise at the board. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Wayne. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Bob Purcell. I'm the director of the Public Employee Department for the Labor's International Union of North America. I first started to work uh, with Art Carter in 1977-79 uh, in Cal OSHA when he courageously took on the Dow Chemical and the agricultural chemical industry uh, when it was found that uh, dibromyl chloropropane, DBCP, had an adverse impact on the reproductive health of workers in both uh, manufacturing and distribution. Uh, he then was a great advocate for worker safety and yet was fair and open with the employers uh, this is a great uh, appointment, and I strongly urge his confirmation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Jeremy Smith here on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. Um, Angie Way stole all of my thunder, so I'll associate myself with her comments and just add also uh, that I want to thank both Ed and um, Art for coming back and, and doing state service, and it's good to have their expertise on the board. And thank you, uh, Senator Steinberg, for your line of questioning and, and uncovering the issues that this board had in the past. Thank very good. You. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, Senators Eduardo Martinez, uh, on behalf of Carter Wetch and Associates, uh, representing the California State Pipe Trades Council, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. <laughs> Who, who's this Carter guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Carter is no longer formally affiliated with our firm. I think the fact that his name still remains is indicative of his long history uh, of support of uh, workers, uh, workers' rights and workers' safety. Uh, we think both these candidates would make excellent um, choices to reorient this board uh, again and towards its mission of, of uh, preserving worker safety, and uh, we ask for your confirmation. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Senators, Bob Raymer with the California Building Industry Association, support of these candidates. Uh, I've known and worked with Mr. Carter in various capacities for the past 30 years and look forward to continuing that effort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Schreiber. Thank you. Um, Fran Schreiber with the firm of Kays and McLean. I've known Mr. Carter since 1980 and Mr. Lowry for actually longer than that, having worked with both of them in public service. And I don't think we could find better candidates uh, for this job and support them uh, in this uh, effort. Thank you. Let me see. Yeah. Pretty good. Sarah Nichols on behalf of the SEIU State Council and uh, our 800,000 workers, some of whom are you know, more safe than other workers because they're in service positions, but we do have uh, some workers that suffer high rates of um, 
of occupational injury and um, we're strongly in support of these candidates. We know that Mr. Carter will make an excellent chair and we're really excited to see him stepping into that role and I've known Mr. Lowry from some time and I know that he's going to be an excellent, has been and will continue to be an excellent member of the board. And uh, I'd like to introduce our, one of our nurse members. Welcome. My name is Ingela Dahlgren and I'm tall. <laughs> I, I'm a registered nurse and I am the SEIU Director of Nurse Alliance of California. And uh, I represent 35,000 working nurses here in our state. Uh, I'm here to offer the support for mo both Mr. Lowry and Mr. Carter because both gentlemen in my book have showed a clear understanding of how important Cal OSHA is to protecting all the workers from injury. Uh, as a nurse, we frequently ask OSHA to come and help us to protect the healthcare workers when we can't get help anywhere else. And I have been very impressed with the prompt response I'm getting from your organization. And as nurses, it's extremely important that we not only protect ourselves, that we protect our healthcare workers, but we also protect the community from injury. Because that is one of the things that I take seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to testify. Mr. Chairman, members, Christy Baumer representing the California Professional Firefighters. I would just proudly uh, associate myself with, with uh, Ms. Way's uh, remarks and also just add specifically that Mr. Carter uh, has a, a long, long history with my organization, the firefighters, and an outstanding body of work, so we're pleased to be here and support him. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Steve Johnson. I'm with Associated Roofing Contractors of the Bay Area Counties. And I'm here, we're here in support of uh, Mr. R. Carter for chairman to be uh, confirmation and looking forward to getting to know uh, Mr. Lowry a little better and work with him in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to testify. I'm Marty Fisher on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce and we've been very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with Art these last couple of years. He's been very thoughtful, pragmatic, knowledgeable, uh, and he's always had an open door. We've been able to talk to him. He understands the business aspect as well as the safety aspect of the regulations that we've worked on with, with the board and uh, I look forward to continuing to work with him and, and with Ed as well. Just need to get to know Ed more. Thank you for coming to testify. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I'm Marianne Massenberg with UAW 2865, and we're in strong support of Mr. Carter, um, and I'm sure if we knew Mr. Lowry better, we would be supporting him as well. Um, <laughs> I'm especially happy to support Mr. Carter as a longtime fellow native San Franciscan. Very good, thank you. Mr. Chairman, members, Pete Conaty from Pete Conaty and Associations, and I get to bat clean up, so I'm here to support a fellow CSU graduate. Uh, I spoke on Art's behalf last time. He's been a friend and a mentor to me for 25 years. He is a very fair person. He takes his responsibilities seriously. The dirty little secret is he truly is a policy wonk and he's done a lot of good since he's been on the board. Uh, he also taught me everything I know about wine. <laughs> and he has a very large family to support, so let's please keep him employed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Conaty. <laughs> Are there any witnesses in opposition to the nomination? Either nomination. Very good, if not, um, Look, I think uh, the testimony spoke for itself, and I think uh, the answers to our questions um, were impressive. Um, uh, thought both gentlemen, uh, different experiences, both very thoughtful. Both take the, the job here very seriously. And I think, again, uh, I commend Governor Brown, and we are uh, lucky to have you in the public service. I support the nominations. Take a motion. Moved by Senator Alquist. Senators Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Delion? Fuller? Aye. Fuller, aye. Dutton? Aye. Dutton, aye. Steinberg? Aye. Steinberg, aye. Delion? Aye. Delion, aye. That's five to nothing. I know that uh, Mr. Carter is well aware of uh, that the year's running out. We will intend to take up uh, your nomination, both the nominations, on Friday during our, our Senate legislative session. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you so much. it.
Okay, let us move through quickly. I know that uh, the vice chairman said he had a, uh, a question he wanted to raise on one of the items. We, we can, of course, separate that or any other items. Let's, let's go through here. For items two through nine, are there any uh, items that any member would like to remove for separate for separate discussion or consideration? Uh, just item. item number four. So if I could get a motion then on items two, three, and five through nine, please. Moved by Senator De Leon, please call the roll. Senators Alquist, Alquist I, De Leon. De Leon I, Fuller. Aye. Fuller I, Dutton. Do, do you, you want to separate it out now? Okay, the motion will be amended without objection uh, to be to approve two, three, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, the roll's already been called without objection, so continue to please to call that roll. Senators Dutton? Aye. Dutton, aye. Steinberg? Aye. Steinberg, aye. All right, that, that motion passes five to nothing. Let's take up item four for Senator Dutton. Uh, the, the only thing on uh, number uh, item four that I was uh, concerned about, I know we've talked about this, it uh, seems like <laughs> the last seven years I've been on in the Senate, uh, about the bill limitation for individual members. And what my concern is, is that what's the policy that we're now gonna put in place? Committee bills, we've, at times, we've made exceptions for committee bills, but my understanding, that's not what these are, so. Uh, and then what I would be concerned, if we grant this rule waiver, how is it fairly gonna be applied to all members? Well, character, the, the bill limit doesn't apply to committee bills. And characteristically, right. these sunset bills, which renew uh, various agencies subject to sub sunset limitations, uh, have been introduced as committee bills, but he can't seem to get the entire committee to sign on to these, I guess. So he's requesting that they be introduced as supplemental to his bill package. And while he has not yet introduced 40 bills, he's uh, made a commitment to do that number of bills, and so he's requesting uh, the waiver. It's in some form or another, we're probably, we have, I mean, it's a matter of good public policy, we probably should do the sunset bills because these are going to be agencies that would otherwise disappear by virtue of a technicality. So are we gonna come up with a policy that any sunset bills then would not count towards the members well, bill limitation? Well, I, I think, Did here would be my suggestion that if um, any of the members of the committee feel like um, the exception, if you will, is swallowing the rule in any way, then it's probably appropriate to look at a change in policy. But I think the policy works pretty well. And on a case-by-case case basis, we, we have the ability to say yes or no. Again, Mr. Schmidt, I think, states a, a very good rationale for why this one is a little bit different. I would just suggest that we sort of see how it goes uh, as we get to the bill deadline here. And, and if we have a problem, we'll come back and tighten the policy. And if not, it's probably not necessary. Yeah, just, I'm, just, I'm just concerned about making sure we have the same policy apply to all members for all things. And that's what I'm concerned about, because otherwise, I don't think there's an intent to show preferential treatment, but I don't think, that's where my concern would be, is the appearance that. I understand. Yeah. Um, Well, look at, uh, certainly can talk about it more, and if there is a, a policy suggestion or a rules change suggestion, we can certainly talk about it. Okay, so these are sunset bills only, right? They're sunset bills only. Are you, okay. you, and we'll go ahead and revisit this for an overall policy. Sure. Because you know it's probably gonna come up. If it comes up, yes. Well, let's talk, and if we, if you wanna okay. revisit as a policy item as, as when we get to or past the bill deadline, we'll do it. Okay. So are we talking about putting these over or, I guess I'm a little uncomfortable that we haven't exhausted all current remedies available and setting that precedent. I'm, I just got a little lost in the conversation about how we weren't. Um, what, 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 if I could summarize it, usually these bills would not count against the limit, but because for whatever reason, uh, uh, the. Senator Price not being able to get the unanimous support of the committee to make them committee bills. And Senator Price anticipates that he's gonna get to the bill limit. He just wants to make sure he doesn't have a problem as he's drafting his bills. Again, I don't 
think it sets uh, any kind of a dramatic precedent because the policy now, by the way, is that on a case-by-case -case basis, the Rules Committee is authorized to make right. exceptions to the rules. So if a Senator Dutton, for an example, was over his bill limit and came to me and said, you know what, I really want to do this bill, I would probably say, let's do it. Um, y you know, so it's a, I'm not sure that it requires a, a big change in policy. Maybe it does, but I, I don't Well, I don't but so. he's not at his bill limit now. He's not. So I think that's where the, the challenge is. If he was at his bill limit, then I could almost see like, uh, like what we've done before on a case-by-case -case basis we've considered it, but. Okay, well that's a fair point. In other words, don't come to us unless, you abso unless it's absolutely necessary. I mean, necessary. he doesn't even know yet whether he's gonna need it or not. And well, I'll tell you what. That was my only Why don't concern. we put it over a week? Okay. I don't mind putting it over a week. We'll talk to Senator Price. But you know, in the end, if, if he needs it, I would grant the courtesy as I would to you, uh, as well as so long as we didn't think that there was some sort of abuse going on. I don't think that's the case here. But we can put it over a week. Okay, thank you. Okay? Very good. Item, uh, uh, item I, nine. Yeah, item nine, the only thing it was, my understanding is that uh, Senator Berryhill has declined uh, to be on the slip committee or requested not to be on it. Oh, he, okay, well. Let's get him down here right now. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, so, so you want to uh, amend the amend the amend the motion to take him off? Yeah. Okay. So move, and then well, someone will communicate with Senator Yee that he needs to find another Republican member of the uh, of the Select Committee. Okay. Moved by Senator Alquist with that amendment. Uh, please call the roll. Senators Alquist. Aye. Alquist I. Delion. Delion I. Fuller. Fuller, I, Dutton. Aye. Dutton, I, Steinberg. Hi. Steinberg, I. Very good. Five to nothing. Do we have any executive session we items? We have a walk-on. Oh, we do have a walk-on. This is to allow uh, our Senate Office of International Relations to welcome the General Consul of the United Kingdom in San Francisco to the floor on January 19th. Moved. Without objection, I'm going to... What's that? And talk. And talk. Yeah. Briefly. One Briefly. Minute. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start doing this. I'm going to, without objection, substitute the unanimous roll call. So we're going to call the roll every time. Okay. Nice. Fine. Yeah. Save you a little time. Here's the stuff it talks like. So, like What's that? I said, so he's taking your talk time, so whatever you decide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, five to nothing. That motion passes. Okay. Anything else? Executive uh, session. Exe we, do have an, we do have executive session, so we'll adjourn the uh, current session. We need... Uh, I guess everybody appropriately is here. Staff is fine. Um, staff is fine. We got a, a no no problem. With